Hello, my name is Andy Tidy and welcome back to another episode of Life at 2.3 miles an hour. Have you ever seen some music from your youth advertised as improved and digitally remastered? You've bought the album and whilst there are fewer hisses and crackles, most of the anticipated improvements just seem to pass you by. Well, it may be the quality of my sound system, but much of the much vaunted improvements in these digitally enhanced versions are lost on me. And to be honest, the new often sounds very much like the old. Well, at the risk of overselling and underdelivering, we've decided to release an updated version of our Tipton Green and Tolen Communication Canal photo stream. It's nearly a year since we shared our first set of archive images. And since that time, our collection has grown and now it includes a lot of photographs taken when the canal was both in water and navigable. But it's not just the quantity which has improved. The quality has improved as well. As time has passed, more and more old photographs have emerged and we now have many more high resolution versions. And as icing on the cake, my friend and fellow BCN enthusiast Duncan Moore has developed his skills in the subtle art of colorization, which essentially means artificially adding color back into these old black and white images. And in my opinion, the end result is a step change in the quality of our photo stream of this old, abandoned and long lost canal in the black country. For those of you unfamiliar with this unusual waterway, it can be divided into three distinct sections. Starting with the Tipton Green Canal, which made its way down through six locks to the original site of the Horsley Ironworks and its associated collieries. It was built in 1805 and when it was built, it was made as just a branch canal from the old Birmingham Canal, which ran from Birmingham to Wolverhampton. Four years earlier, in 1801, the Tolend branch had been constructed up the hill from the Walsall Canal. It came through two locks and it was built to serve the collieries of Cottrell Farm. And then in 1809, these two branches were connected together using a short stretch of new canal and two extra locks, creating the kink that you'll see in the maps. And lock seven was actually built on the kink with a lock keeper's house beside it. In time, the section that went down to the Horsley furnaces was abandoned, probably at the time when the Horsley ironworks were moved to their new site on the edge of the Dixon branch. That sounds complicated? Well, I guess it was. But then fate took another twist. And in 1838, Telford built the new mainline canal between Birmingham and Tipton, otherwise known as the Island Line. And this effectively chopped off the top third of the Tipton Green Canal between locks three and four. After the completion of the construction of the new main line, the top three locks became the Tipton Green Canal and the lower section became the Tollend Communication Canal. All of this is a bit of a long way of explaining the lot numbering system that we use in this video. Taken as a whole, the whole route included 10 locks starting at the top. And that's the sequence that we'll be using. Of course, this entire length of canal has long been obliterated from the Tipton landscape. But the top section remained in place and operational through until 1960. And the lower section between the new main line and the Walsall Canal operated until 1966. But sadly, there was no lingering departure for this waterway. No sooner had the traffic ceased than the channel was drained, filled in and redeveloped. But as in so many other locations, the developers were reluctant to get too close to the tainted canal bed. So even today, its course can mostly be followed either as open footpath or as roadways behind factories. Now as to the new photo stream, 
Over the last year, we have refined, improved and enhanced our collection of photos, which capture this lost artery of the Industrial Revolution. And to give you an overview that the route used to take, Duncan has created a flyby from Google Earth. And this will take a flight down the route of the canal before we start the photo stream. And because canals always look different when you go in the other direction, I've included a flyby back up the hill to Tipton at the end. As for the photo stream, it runs for about 12 minutes, allowing 7 seconds per image. We tried to select images which best illustrate the route, but without too much duplication. And we've also selected images which show the canal both with and without water to show you how it looked as it was being erased from the Tipton landscape. This collection of images have been found or donated by many individuals, but it's only right that we credit a few particular collections who have added a substantial number of photos. So we'd really want to give thanks to Hugh Potter for his access to his 1970s images of the area. We'd also want to thank Michael Harrison of the Historic Narrowboat Club for providing us with the relevant images from the Philip Weaver collection which they curate. And then finally we would thank Keith Hodgkins, himself a local photographer but also curator of the Alan Price collection. And then finally, I really need to give a particular shout out to Duncan Moore. He's stuck with this project for the last 12 months. And as well as adding colour to all of those old black and white images, he's also created those rather splendid flybys. So, thank you Duncan. So here is the first flyby going down the hill and the digitally enhanced photo stream. I hope you enjoy it. I must say I have watched this photo stream probably a dozen times as I was assembling it and I never tire of watching these old images. Seven seconds isn't really enough to do them justice. So you may well find yourself rewinding and watching it all over again.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that collection of archive photos. I'm sure you will agree that the addition of colour really brings the stream to life. And as I promised at the start, I will finish with a flyby back up the hill to Tipton. that's it for this episode of Canal Hunter and I really hope that you enjoyed the digitally remastered version of the Tollend Communication Canal photo stream version of the Tollend Commission <laughs> with of course the obligatory bonus track. If time permits we'll put together some more updated photo streams over the summer. So if you like this approach to history don't forget to click the like button. Not because it gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling, although of course the positive feedback is always welcome. But in fact, it excites the YouTube algorithms and it ensures that it will feature on more people's suggested viewing lists. And more viewers means a wider appreciation of the history which is buried all around us. So for now, goodbye, happy hunting and I will see you soon. Cheerio! Thank you.